News, Perth. Bringing our panel this hour, we are joined by former acting director of the Liberal Party, Andrew Bragg and Labor strategist Bruce Hawker. A very good afternoon to both of you. Thanks for joining us. I want to just pick up on the poll that was in the Fairfax Press this morning. We can bring that up. Um, so no real movement in the two parties standing. Labor still pretty comfortably ahead, 53 to 47%. But a fall in Bill Shorten's own standing. His personal ratings are down considerably since the last one, which uh, Fairfax, we should point out, uh, uh, the last poll was in May. They don't do every fortnight in the way news poll does. Bruce, to you on this, is this a worry at all for Labor? Well, as long as Labor's primary vote keeps holding up, and it's two-party preferred vote for that matter, then it's not such a big issue for uh, Labor. Uh, at the moment, all the attention seems to be on uh, Malcolm Turnbull, and he's making sure that the attention keeps on him for uh, all the wrong reasons. So, uh, if I were Bill Shorten, I wouldn't be overly uh, concerned about this. And one thing's for sure, Labor's not about to change uh, leaders after the problems that we all went through uh, between 2010 and 2013. Um, I think Bill just needs to... But, but, uh, yeah, look, we have seen the government, though, Bruce, go pretty hard on uh, Bill Shorten, you know, this kill Bill strategy, as it's been called. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we keep hearing the references to... Uh, what did Scott Morrison say in Question Time this afternoon? That if, that if he were at Hogwarts, he'd be in the Slytherin house. <laughs> he keeps <laughs> talking about him, um, you know, sliding and all these snake references and so on. Do you, do you think that is having any impact in, in the voters' mind about Bill Shorten? Uh, well, those sort of negative comments certainly do. Um, the other sort of things that can bring down your, your personal vote is by going hard yourself on issues rather than leaving it up to others. And, yep. uh, and Bill Shorten has chosen to lead from the front, which I think is commendable. So, you know, those things can have an impact. I don't think that they necessarily reflect very well on the people that utter those sorts of comments. And, uh, and generally, it gives the public a rather negative view or reaffirms their rather negative view about politicians in general. And Andrew, as Bruce points out, the main thing is what the two-party result is. If an election were held now, uh, according to all the polls, uh, Labor would win. Sure. Well, the election is some time away and the only poll that matters is on election day. And I think uh, what you want to be looking for is that the, the government of the day has a, a clear plan for re-election, which is based around credible policy. And I think you can see that um, starting to come um, to fruition with a focus on energy and hopefully later on, things like taxation. So, on energy, I mean, clearly the government wants this to be the main focus. It sees vulnerability on Labor's side. But, Andrew, it's yet to really land its own energy policy. I mean, sure, it, it, it wants to keep something like the Liddell, you know, coal plant going, but surely no-one's going to buy the joint if it doesn't know, for example, whether there's going to be a clean energy target or not. Well, I think the most important thing with energy policy is to put the ideology before... Uh, sorry, to put the science before the ideology. Um, <laughs> and all too often, all too often we've seen uh, the reverse, and uh, like I almost just said then, and we've seen really a dog's <laughs> breakfast of uh, energy policy across the Commonwealth and the States, and uh, it's any wonder people uh, are concerned about making long-term investments. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the sooner that this can be cleared up, the better for all. The sooner, sooner the government's policy can be cleared up, is that what you mean? No, I think the, the nation's uh, energy policies, um, especially including the states, uh, have been um, <coughs> a, a great mess. And I think we have put mm. uh, the ideology before the science in almost every jurisdiction now. Yeah, but we still don't have a federal government policy. Right? We don't know whether they're going to go with a clean energy target, much less what it would look like. So the point is, sure, you can say yeah. we want to keep this coal plant going, but who the hell is going to put, you know, however much money into that until they know whether there's going to be a clean energy target. Well, I think uh, at the underlying level, David, though, you, you know, whatever the Commonwealth does, all the while you have these crazy uh, renewable energy targets of 50% in South Australia and at WA and whatnot, um, you're going to have a very distorted market. So I think you've got to look at all the distortions and hopefully try and cl clean them out, focus on uh, cutting emissions. Um, and try and do it with the science in mind at all times. And hopefully that's what Finkel will deliver. Well, Finkel's, Finkel's delivered. He's handed his report to the government. It's, it's yeah. the government we're waiting on now well, to that make process. a call on whether, yeah. that whether process. to adopt it or not. Bruce, the, the big picture question here is, do you detect, Bruce, a shift in the climate debate? Has, has, has there been a shift towards a, a realisation as prices go up, hey, we are going to need more 
most likely coal or gas, uh, to stay in the mix for longer? Well, I think there's an understanding, certainly on Labor's part, that we do need to have a, a greater focus on gas. And, of course, the Prime Minister came out and was talking about ensuring that the uh, gas exporters uh, in Australia start spending or start allocating some of that gas reserve to Australian domestic use. But he's done absolutely nothing to make that happen, which is Bill Shorten's point. I mean, Liddell is a good example of that. It's a 50-year-old power plant. They want to make it go for another 10 years and uh, and Labor says well why don't we without ruling out Liddell as a uh, as a possibility ensure that these power plants that they want to keep going these baseload power plants plants relying on gas rather than uh, coal that is a much more sensible approach and then we can transition to uh, renewable energy and by the way it's not a fanciful thing to say that Australia should have 50% uh, renewable uh, energy by 2030 we're not talking about tomorrow we're talking about 2030 it's 2017 last time I checked plenty of time but there's got to be a bipartisan commitment to do it, well, and that's yeah, not but, happening. But hopefully, Bruce, if, if there are further technological breakthroughs, because we have seen, haven't we, in places like South Australia, I'm not saying it's because of necessarily the renewables in the mix, but you need that baseload power there, don't you, when the, when the peak is on? When everyone wants to use the air conditioner, yep. um, you, you need that baseload availability. Well, you do. And, you know, Liddell, for example, is not scheduled for closure until 2022. So there is time uh, for... The the, uh, for, the, for the companies to look at ways in which they can still use transitional gas, uh, me energy measures like gas, rather than just coal all the time, to, uh, to uh, get closer to achieving that 50% renewable target within the next uh, 12 or so years, which is what the target is. Uh, there's plenty of time and there are plenty of uh, scientific breakthroughs happening right now. But we do have to understand that while ever we're relying on coal, 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 we are adding to a real problem with CO2 emissions. And there's no escaping right, well, that. Yeah. That is the science. No, th that, that, that's, that's true. They contribute to CO2 emissions, but, you know, the, the other part of the equation is the cost of 50% uh, renewables, and, and that's still a little unclear. Let me move to the same-sex marriage debate. Now, Andrew, you are the director of the Libs and Nats, uh, yes, uh, part of this campaign, and we saw the Prime Minister there on the weekend uh, who was speaking at the, the launch of that campaign there in Sydney. How important is that to you to have Malcolm Turnbull uh, along for that, and, you know, did it take a bit of arm-twisting? Well, David, I think it's very important that the, the Prime Minister was able to speak yesterday. Um, a lot of Australians don't know many politicians by name, but they certainly know uh, the Prime Minister, and I think him urging uh, us all to vote yes is a very powerful uh, first step in the campaign. But I think more broadly, uh, I think we'd be naive to think that politicians will win this <coughs> debate. I think there are... Um, football players and cricketers and all sorts of other organisations that have come out today. Well, indeed. I mean, the, the NRL and I think, what is it, Cricket Australia have now uh, also yeah. backed in the Yes and uh, campaign as well. I mean, that, that's pretty significant, isn't it? That, I mean, that is massive uh, because that will provide some validation uh, to people who, um, you know, grew up in places like Shepparton, like I did, uh, where, you know, a lot of the football uh, types around the um, dressing sheds and whatnot will... Uh, really be some of the most influential people in those communities. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, th I think that's a big step, but, I mean, the big problem we've got here is, is a sense of complacency. Uh, this won't just happen, and uh, people have got to have a, a clear plan to vote and post. We still see uh, a lot of reports, Bruce, of um, the bullying of those who aren't in favour of same-sex marriage. Uh, you know, whether that's um, journalists or others online in social media who are having a crack at those who don't support it. Uh, what, what do you think? How careful do people still need to be in advocating their various positions and targeting those who they disagree with? Uh, well, I think you have to be very careful about the language that you use, and that's the argument that's been put forward, I think, by the same-sex marriage advocates, uh, that uh, you, know, you can come very close to trolling, if not trolling people, with the nature of the language and, that you use. And that sort of online bullying, regardless of where it comes from, is just uh, not on and should be exposed and, 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 and treated accordingly by anyone that sees it. So uh, I think it is important important that they don't do that. But I don't think Canavan today is, you know, has really helped the, uh, the debate at all. I mean, 
to me, that's just a, you know, a real insight into the uncluttered mind of a very shallow thinker. And we need to expose that for what it is too. It's bad Sorry, form. this is the, the Matt Canavan, the yeah. Matt Canavan uh, comments this morning um, in, in, in relation to what his, his own position and his view on where the debate's at. Well, I guess the, 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 the line that, you know, that, uh, that the, the people should just be able to take uh, uh, muscle up and, and be prepared to yeah, have, have a debate and so forth. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think they're just going to be careful about that sort of language uh, because well, I think that can be seen because, as I mean, intimidatory seen, as well. Yeah. Yeah, we have seen on social media various examples now of what people have said and, you know, is, is that the sort of stuff we should grow a spine for? And, and there is some pretty ugly stuff uh, that's, that's out there, no doubt about it. We've seen today too, we might bring it up again, the actual survey form that will be sent out in the mail from tomorrow by the Bureau of Statistics and presumably you'll start to receive these later this week. Um, what do you both think about the form uh, that's out there? It seems pretty straightforward. You know, it says mark a box, yes or no. Uh, and, um, and then, you know, replied paid envelope, stick it back in the mail. Uh, and get it done today, it reminds us as well. Is it, is it all pretty straightforward? And Andrew is, you know, someone who's directly involved in this. Uh, how do you ensure that people do just that? Fill it in and get it back as soon as they can. Yes, it is a straightforward question. Uh, the most important thing people need to do is make a plan in their own mind about um, when they'll vote, hopefully yes, um, and then think about where, where they'll physically post uh, their survey form uh, in the post box, hopefully nearby. And when they do that, they should also take a picture of themselves posting it. Take a picture of themselves posting it to, uh, and, and what, share to, it. Uh, to send out on share yeah. it on social media, remind everyone else to do the same. I guess, I guess Bruce, this is the un, uh, uncharted territory for Australian politics, isn't it? This get out the vote, uh, and particularly being a postal survey, how do, you, how do you ensure people don't just stick it on the fridge and forget about it? Well, I think it should be part of the pillow talk, yeah, the day that you get the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get it. Make sure you talk to your partner of whatever sex and say to them, uh, let's make sure we fill that out uh, together and go and post the... Uh, post the survey back because uh, getting out the vote is something which uh, Australian campaigners are not used to but they can take uh, a lead from you know most of the countries and the, the democracies around the world where it is a big issue and uh, and there are lots of strategies in place which I'm sure the campaign uh, the the yes vote campaign is well across now uh, and I, I think that it is really important that you know we remind each other constantly not to leave the damn thing at the bottom of the pile of un paid uh, electricity bills uh, and make sure that we go out and, and, uh, and, and, and actually post it as, as Andrew said. And for a lot of young people, posting a letter will be a new and novel and quite exciting experience. So well, go indeed. out and do it. Indeed. There was a terrific little video from Andrew Lee uh, talking about standing next to a post box. You know, have you ever seen one of these before, young folks? Here's what it is. <laughs> but I like, Bruce, how you've, you've cleverly brought together our two issues of power prices and same-sex marriage. Uh, we'll leave it there. Thank you both very much for joining us this afternoon. Look forward to catching up again soon. Cheers. All right. We are